All right. So we are um we might get to the end of um the first book of Kings. So we're at um the first book of Kings chapter twenty one. And we're, we'll have the famous story of uh, Nabot and his vineyard. All right, so we're we're holding. Well, Elijah will come back. Um, I mean, Elijah will come back in Jewish tradition, but Elijah will come back into the story. But right right now, uh, he's not here. And um, uh, we're, we're, it's like a it's a side story to the story of the wars at Ahav. And the king of, of Judea, uh, or of Judah, uh, Yehoshaphat, we're having with the Arameans. Remember, we were there last last week, and now we have this uh, this cycle. Like to read chapter twenty one. What page? Seven Miriam no, first. The following events occurred sometime afterward. <laughs> Naboth, the Jezreelite, owned a, owned a vineyard in Jezreel, adjoining the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, give, give me your vineyard so that I may have it as a vegetable, market, since it is right next to my palace. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will pay you the price in money. But Naboth replied, the Lord forbid that I should give up to you what I have inherited from my father. Okay. Wow. Well, we have the king, Ahab. You see the nice vineyard. And let's pay attention to the dialogue because you see when you see dialogue and then Someone else tells someone what they said later in the Torah that we have to pay attention to that. And we'll see that in a second. So what what is Ahab or Ahab to say to Nabot? Nabot. So why why does he want the the vineyard? The right. garden, but it's the next part, to the palace, a nice plot of land. He wants to spend, you know, right. happens all the time in real estate, <laughs> right? Okay. And then what does he say? Yeah. Well, he says, no, no, but he wants to he says, give me your vineyard. Well, me first, your he says, give me, but then he says, or I'll pay you. I will pay, you, right? I'll give you another vineyard. You'll swap or, or pay me, right? Mm -hmm. So, first, it seems like it doesn't say, he doesn't start with, I want to buy it. It starts with, give it to me, but then he he, he really is not going to expro expropriate it, right? Okay. Um, Actually, it seems like he's saying both, that he will expropriate. He's saying, Give it to me, I will pay you, but it's not like can I? Right, it's like, right. So it's ambiguous, right? It is ambiguous. It is ambiguous, but you know, real estate agents knock on people's doors all the time. But do you want to sell? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and so, uh, but here's the king. So let's think about who is this. This is the king in surprise, or some what's a person who owns a vineyard? What are they called? A vintner? Yeah, 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 okay. But then, why doesn't Nabot want to sell? He inherited the land tradition. Right. Okay. It's like a farm that's been owned for generations. Right. So now remember when the Israelites entered the land, how was land distributed? It was distributed to all the families, and you inherited. And every 50 years, what happens? It goes back, back to, to the original owner. Yeah. It goes back to the family that originally owned it, right? Because you could buy and sell land. It says in the Torah, though, you should only sell your land if you're in dire straits. How about not in dire straits? He feels connected to the land. Has anybody seen? Remember there was a George Clooney movie like 15, oh. 20 years ago. What was it called? Um, the one in Hawaii. In Hawaii. Oh, yeah. 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 Descendants. Yeah. The Descendants. Yeah. I, I, I bet they were thinking of the Bible when they wrote that about, <laughs> about land and, and and inheritance and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's a good movie. Wait. Yeah. I have a yeah. question. We got a completely off track, right? Yeah. Um, but you, you mentioned like we should pay attention to the dialogue. And I see that they have exclamation points. Yes. There's no exclamation <laughs> points in ancient Hebrew, but he puts an exclamation point because they put an exclamation point for Nabot, Nabot because he uses this word Khalila. You'll hear that all the time in, in uh in Israel today. They'll say Khalila, which means like you know, God forbid. 
there's you know it's a that way it's it's a word of interpretive yeah it's interpretive but it's a word of exasperation yeah yeah, yeah. okay so the book doesn't want to sell okay we're gonna keep going Ahab went home dispirited and sullen because of the answer that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had given him. I will not give up to you what I have inherited from my fathers. He lay down on his bed and turned away his face, and he would not eat. Is that what Naboth said? Kind of, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. But this is what, so now we have to think the stages. Ahab goes home. And this is what he's thinking that Naboth said to him. Who speaks like that to the king? Kind of, right? The building up the the, um, the confrontation. The, the confrontation, the covetedness, right? Okay. Keep going. Oh, okay. His wife Jezebel came to him and asked him, Why are you so dispirited that you won't eat? So he told her, I spoke to Naboth, the Jezreelite. And propose to him, sell me your vineyard, vineyard for money, or if you prefer, I'll give you another vineyard in exchange. But he answered, huh. I will not give my vineyard to you. How's it? How's it different now? There's no reason. It's just yeah. now, you know. Well, in in Ahab's memory of it, I offered the money first. first. Yeah. And why? And what Nabot's answer? No. no, he refused. He so. just refused. No, 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 no reason why, right? <laughs> Short bird. Yeah. His wife Jezebel said to him, Now is the time to show yourself king over Israel. Rise and eat something and be cheerful. I will get the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, for you. All right. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, what's her answer? I can fix this. I David. can fix this. I, we won. Remember from David's. Uh, David's uh, people, they fix things for him too, right? He doesn't know about it. They fix things that she's telling him she's going to, but also show yourself king over Israel. What's the king? Can the king appropriate land? Probably not. Not probably not. Well, but, so uh, as codified in Jewish law and interpreted, interpreted through different things, yes, when it comes to if they if there's war and they need food for the troops, if there's war and they need to build a road, if there's war. Things like that, you know, emergencies, you can expropriate land. Why did why does Ahab want it land? For vegetables. For he just wants he just wants to own the land. Right. To, to me, it's interesting. It, it kind of gets back to our everyone's human inclination to rationalize things. Mm. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, we do this all the time. We do it every single day. 100%. We have a story yep. of our actions and why we are, are in the right. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, it's an example of that. Yes. Yeah. And add political power to it. Add political power to it. But right. even without, I mean, yeah. I, For sure. I go through my life with this. We, we all do it. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes. But now let's let's talk about how what does this have to do with power? Yeah. It's just it's a piece of land, you know, it, it he wants. And when you want something and have the power to get it. <laughs> uh -huh. Absolute power corrupts absolute power. Right. Yeah. But the king's not supposed to have absolute power. Yeah. He's also not going for that in the beginning. She did not. That's the point. She pushes him yeah. even more. A little bit. Right? Yeah. He's just depressed over a piece of land. He accepted the limits of his power. He did. Even though it made him depressed. Right. Even though, you know, which is kind of silly. We're, like, we're supposed to read this and it's kind of silly. He's like not eating. Right? That was a big thing, then, right? But not eating. I mean, not, yes. I mean, it would be a big thing for, yeah. But I, I mean, it's showing, it's like, you know, it, um, you know, in Shakespeare's Melon, um, Melancholia yeah. or whatever, you know, right? All the reports of, that I did in Morristown. All of the what? All the testing that I did. <laughs> what do you say? Well, it still was on, not on you. <laughs> um, so, yes. It, it, well, let's see what happens. Well, I think he's not used to people saying no to him. He's not used to people, or... Maybe he is, and his wife doesn't want him to be used to people saying no to him, right? So remember, Isabel, Jezebel, come, her her dad was the king of, of Sidon, I think, right? Who, what is she saying? Oh, what's this, this Israelite tradition of the king not having absolute power, right? I, see. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's part of it, too. Yeah. Okay. So now, 
Let's see. What but I would, I mean, she gets a bad rap. I mean, I don't know the whole story, but I know she has is famous for getting a bad rap. Well, right. Well, we'll see what. But I mean, he might have gone this direction without. I mean, he was maybe, he, maybe, was, he was starting to rap well, so much. We don't know. So let's think yeah, about that. That's a let's think, let's yeah, think about that. Going. Going. But like, but Isabel, it it happens. We've been reading the last few chapters. Kind of goes back and forth with repentance and and belief in God, and then bringing back the Baal. But it's it's usually seen as because of her bringing back okay. Baal. Okay. You know the 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 foreign gods. He has repentance, and he will again. Uh, but when we read her demise, uh, we'll see that she never has any kind of repentance. Right now, yes, we, we could look at it, uh, and you know, why why does it make the woman as a bad character and stuff like that? But uh, she becomes a feminist hero to a certain extent. No, it's hard to make her a feminist hero because she's pretty bad. That and, magazine and everything. No, the, mag the magazine's called Lilith, not Jezebel. Oh, Ma Jezebel, right? I was thinking the Jewish magazine. No, right, yeah. Jezebel. Yes, yeah, yes. So because right. she doesn't take any. Yeah, but I will say, like, she she's pretty, like, she, let's get like, there. The bad, oh, okay. the bad characters yeah. in the Torah are usually not so complicated, yeah. but she's not. Okay, so uh, here, let's, Leslie, you go, uh, verse eight. Verse eight? Yep, so here's what Jezebel's going to do. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who lived in the same town with Naboth. In the letter, she wrote as follows. Proclaim a fast and, and seat Nabot at the front of the assembly and seat two scoundrels opposite him okay. and let him let them testify against him. You have reviled God and king. Then take him out and stone him to death. All right. So first of all, who, you know, tonight turned for, for him, who, who speaks on behalf of the king? Esther. Well, Esther, but first... Haman. Haman does the letters with the seal of the king, and the king doesn't really know what's going on. The king's kind of a, a buffoon in in, uh, in the form story, right? So the form story might be playing with this a little bit. But what, what is she saying? What was she? Take him out. Right, but how? Let's make it look. Or bear false witness. Let's right. Yeah, bear false witness. That's what bearing false witness means in the Ten Commandments. But let's make it look official. Like, let's have a trial. Yeah. Let's, you know... But she's Probably. doing it in his name. She's doing it in the because he doesn't have any perfect position. But. Yeah, but like if, if somebody else got a letter and they did. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, gets yeah. himself. I mean, that's. Right. She is implicating her husband in it, even though we don't know if her husband knows about it. But yeah, mm -hmm. she's implicating her husband because she doesn't have an official position to tell people to do so. So the two commandments down. Yeah. Coveting your neighbor's property and false testimony. And we know she's an idolater. Oh. Right, right, right. Strike yeah. three. Coveting, but pretty soon it'll be stealing then too. In that point, right? But it, but uh, um, and but it's funny. Say that he reviles God. She doesn't care about God at all, right? Okay. We're, we're you know okay. Yeah, I was just thinking that the first thing that Jezebel says to him, yes. like she notices he's sad or upset, is. Now is the time to show mm -hmm. yourself king over Israel. Yeah. So I think one that the reason that he says that maybe we're seeing we're supposed to see this comically that like this is ridiculous, a ridiculous way for an adult man to behave. But on the other hand, perhaps he was so expecting his subjects to be respectful of yeah. him, yeah, yeah, yeah. give him you know yeah. the sort of due yeah. whatever that um, he he's <laughs> his uh, authority he feels has been invalidated. And what she's doing is she is. In effect, for everyone else, mm -hmm. it looks like the king is doing this. Yes, yes. So, in other words, what she's saying is this: show you whether it's true or not. Show yeah. yourself, use your power, because all the people she writes to, and this this uh, show trial. Yeah. This is not going to be a secret. That is a show trial. Right. Maybe. Well, it's not a secret for the elders, but it'll be a secret for Naboth and and everybody else who's at the trial. Right. It but, sounds like it's going to be very obvious that this is a show trial. Go get two scoundrels to lie about it. Everyone is going to know the scoundrels are, are scoundrels. Maybe, 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 maybe. Mm -hmm. and, but it's also like, let, let's talk about why would one respect the king, right? Why doesn't he have respect? Let's let's think about that. <laughs> now, like selling the, maybe selling the land or not is not doesn't have anything to do with respect. He doesn't want to sell the land. He shouldn't have to sell the land. Right, but why does Ahab or why does Isabel thinks 
people don't respect him because he doesn't have absolute power. That's what she thinks. Mm -hmm. But let's now think, if the Israelites don't respect him, why would that be? Yeah. So to me, there's like, uh, when you talk about authority, there's, yeah. kind of, there's, there's like, in modern sense, a couple of kinds, like there's authority through force and there's authority kind of through respect and whatnot. Right. And they, they may not well, respect him either. One of his but, previous actions he did. One of his previous, he's been successful in the war against the Arameans. Right. Okay. But like, we have to think, where how God said through Elijah, there's 7,000 Israelites who still are loyal to me. So we have to think those 7,000 Israelites don't respect him because he he's not, uh, he's, a, he's an idolater or brings idolatry to the country, right? Um, maybe people might not respect him because, you know. He doesn't have charisma. He doesn't. Maybe, yeah, who knows? Yeah. Just in this instance, yeah. are you thinking that perhaps even going to Neboth and and making an offer for a real estate deal. This is not how king, I don't know, but maybe yeah. this is not how kings are supposed to work. A king who's truly a king would just have a messenger go to Neboth right. and say, by the way, your land is now my land, get all right. Well, well, that's what he's ever kind of saying, right? That's what she wants him to do. But he's like, he's he's trying to do the real, yeah, maybe, maybe it's, not, it's unbecoming of a king to the deal in real estate to ask, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm mean, coming to ask for anyone for anything. Well, maybe they don't respect him because he's married yeah. an idolater. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, that at least the seven thousand Israelites that that are not idolaters like that. Is there an indication that he's not respected other than what she thinks? No, we don't know. That that's what I'm trying to think. Like, what what are ways she? It seems like she thinks he's not respected because he's not, you know, a tyrant. I don't know that that she's one to. Yeah, right, right. Judge. Yeah. Oh, she thinks it's not respected because the guy should have. She thinks the guy yeah. should have said, "Oh, of course I'll give you my land." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you're the king. I'm going right. to give you my land. That's one person. But to begin with, she probably doesn't respect him. He believes in God, and she yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's also, yeah. I mean, he goes back and forth. But yes, okay. So keep keep going. His townsmen, the elders and nobles who lived in his town, did as Jezebel um, had instructed them just as was written in the letters she had sent them. They proclaimed the fast and seated Naboth at the front of the assembly. Then the two scoundrels came and sat down opposite, opposite him, and the scoundrels testified against Naboth publicly as follows. Naboth has reviled God and king. Then they took him outside the town and stoned him to death. I have to say one thing about the, the fast. Uh, traditional commentators say, because Naboth, during the fast, you, you bring the most pious person up to to pray on behalf of the community, and uh, Naboth would have been that that person. <laughs> and then it becomes even a bigger deal that then people accuse him that he's not actually pious, right? So that that's what uh, that's a traditional comment on that, right? Terrible. So okay, so they they accuse him. So so we're we're guessing it's in front of the whole town or whatever, right? Okay. Word was sent to Jezebel. Naboth has been stoned to death. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Go and take possession of the vineyard, which Naboth the Jezreelite refused to sell you for money. For Naboth is no longer alive, he is dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab set out for the vineyard of Naboth, as of the Abot Jezreelite, to take possession of it. Okay, stop it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If the letter was sent out to the people with Ahab's signature, yeah. why would they give word to Yezbeth? Because they were in on it. The elders who set up the show trial were in on it. They, I guess they kind of knew that it was from her. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just looked at the Hebrew, and the Jezreelite is written as Israel. Israel, Jezreel, is Israel with a Zion. Yeah, Israel is a it's a va it's a valley kind of not all the way north of the land of Israel, but um, but in the north of the land of Israel, um, and it's you know the most fertile part of the north. That's where all the early kibbutzim were, or a lot of the early kibbutzim were. Israel means uh, 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 God uh, God seed, uh, your God will see, right? And um, and uh, it's um that's where um uh the town of Nazareth, right, where Jesus is from is up is like up in the hills above the Jezreel Valley. So it's in the Guido is up above the Jezreel Valley and yeah.
Okay. So she, he now owns the land. Now I have a question. Like, can he just like I guess if, if someone gets uh, gets the death penalty, they lose their land. I guess that's part of it. I don't well, know. Did he have any in kin? Inherited. It doesn't say, but maybe you know, like I don't know the. <laughs> I mean, states now impound your house for when you go in the jail all the time, you know, like stuff like that. So I think that, that, yeah. you have to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's striking to me that he doesn't question. He's like, oh, he's dead. Let me go get the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't ask what happened. Yeah. 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 So, it's, so it's again, kind of like the king in the Esther story. He just kind of doesn't want to know, like, oh, wait, you want to kill all the Jews? Okay. You know, like, he's dead. Fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, he, he's staying out of it, kind of like David, a little like David, that he didn't want to know what happened, but then David did, you know. Well, maybe but, that's why he doesn't have respect, because he's a buffoon. He is kind of, yeah. <laughs> he's kind of like a buffoon. He's weak. Yeah, he's weak, yeah. Okay. So now, here comes Elijah. All right. So, uh, someone else pick up it, verse 17. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Go down and confront King Ahab of Israel. Who resides in Samaria. He is now at Naboth's vineyard. He has gone down there to take possession of it. Say to him, Thus said the Lord, Would you murder and take possession? Thus said the Lord, In the very place where the dogs lapped up Naboth's blood, the dogs will lap up your blood too. <laughs> Ahab said to Elijah, So you have found me, my enemy. Yes, I have found you, he replied. Because you have committed yourself to doing what is evil in the sight of the Lord, I will bring disaster upon you. I will make a clean sweep of you. I will cut off from Israel every male belonging to Ahab, Ahab, bond and free. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because of the provocation provocation you have caused by leading Israel to sin. Right, so Ahab's dynasty, just like the two other dynasties of the of yeah. the kingdom of Israel, right? And the Lord has also spoken concerning Jezebel. The dogs shall devour Jezebel in the field of Je Jezreel. All of Ahab's line who die in the town shall be devoured by dogs, and all who die in the open country shall be devoured by the birds of the sky. All right. Oh, boy. Like, we, we heard this curse a little bit before, too. Why is the punishment so much worse here than what David got when Nathan right. approached him? Well, is there a commentary on that? David repented. Okay. And we're going to see. We'll see. Hold the thought in a okay. second. We'll see it in the story. But... Um, I, I love this, the part where Ahab sees Elijah. <laughs> what does he say in verse 20? You found my enemy. No, you found, found me, my, yeah. my enemy. Right? Ah, you found me. Isn't that kind of a, a sign of guilt? Yeah, he knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> right? He, Ahab maybe knew what he did. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also calling the prophet my enemy, what, what is he also saying? Who is the prophet? Messenger of God. God. Yeah. God. God. Yeah. Right. I can't run from God. He's kind of saying too. Right. And, and, but it's also just kind of funny that Elijah is like this thorn in his in his side all the time. But he he's a, he sees him as his enemy. Right. Yeah. So well, they're kind of representing um, Naboth, uh, like uh, yeah, Elijah is yeah. representing God and kind of the people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 regular people. Right. You know. Again, we could talk about also like. You know, kept saying Ahab, who lives in Samaria, the city that was built, and Mavod was a man of the land, right? We can kind of see like the class and the kind of the kind of the elites versus the, right. the the country people. You know, that's in there too, right? Yeah, Dave. So the, 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 the English uh, translation is a little more coarse in the in Alders yeah. uh, for twenty one, where I will cut off. Uh, Every Israel male belonging mm -hmm. to Ahab. Yeah. The way Alder translates it, I will cut <laughs> off every pisser against the wall. Yeah, that's that's really really so. <laughs> yeah, that's the real the way it really says. And he says this right course, here. this course epitaph for males reserved for curses. Yeah. Machtin. Sorry, I should I should have pointed that. Machtin Bakir. It says right here. Those are piss on the wall. 
So I just found it interesting. And the reason I like reading the other translation, as you said, since I can't learn Hebrew, and yeah. it's a way to get closer to it. Yeah, it said that a couple of times in the book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's interesting they chose not to translate it that way. Yeah. Well, it's because we're supposed to think we're supposed to think the Bible is is biased, right? Right. You know, the Bible is can be funny and coarse, and, and coarse, yeah. and yeah. And when we get to the Book of Esther right. tonight, you'll see, like, it's about there's sex and drinking, and and it's a farce also, and it and it's a political commentary, and it's you know, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Dave. You, no, no, that's yeah. yeah. Uh, I think you covered it yeah. <laughs> better than I ever. Did. Yeah, yeah. All right. And and you know the image of being you know the dogs you know dogs were not house pets dogs right. were work animals right and and uh, you know um, but why why was Navot why was his blood lapped up by dogs because he was stoned because he was stoned well, like that was that it's not just that he was stoned but his body was left open to be yeah. desecrated by scavengers oh. right right which is even worse right so you're supposed to in, even in the Torah when you give someone the death penalty you're supposed to bury them yeah. Right, because it says it's a desecration to God, and they didn't do that, mm -hmm. I guess. Right, mm -hmm. and so, it, but stoning is like, as stoning, I think, is the worst death penalty they have, like for the worst That's offenses. The thing, I yeah. can't remember. Uh, you know, there's also impaling, there's also strangling, there's <laughs> also right, but uh, but stoning probably takes a while to kill. Them, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know, impaling sounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's also not so great, but, but yeah. Yeah. they didn't have. Well, we, we, we will see. They they talked a little bit about in jail. One of the prophets here. Did we read that already? Yeah, I think so. One of the prophets uh, was put in jail, but they didn't really have jails. You know, they didn't hundred people in jails. Yeah. Okay. So um. Uh, good. So uh, the parenthetical thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's still the birth. I don't know why. You know, there's a again an interpretation of the. Um, of the translator that put this as in parentheses is kind of an aside or an explanation. So who, who's reading here? Indeed, so, there was never anyone like Ahab who committed himself to doing what was displeasing to the Lord at the instigation of his wife Jezebel. <laughs> he acted most abominably, straying ap after the fetishes, just like the Amorites, whom the Lord has since possessed before the Israelites. Right. So that there's a little it is a little bit, he's really bad. But it's a little ambiguous because his wife made him bad. Yeah, he's because like, we'll see in a second. He's spineless. Okay, <laughs> yeah. But we'll see in a second that maybe he's not so as bad, right? Okay. Just like that of the Jewish husband. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know if the oh, Torah, okay. if Jewish tradition see, says Adam was deceived by Eve that. in the same way that Christian tradition says. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. It, I mean, when Eve talks to God about what she did, like she does kind of lie, but I don't, I don't think uh, if I remember, I mean, I, I haven't read every kind of commentary on, on the, on, you know, the part of, of, of Rashid, but like, I don't see it as much as, um, as it is in Christian. So we, the Jewish tradition does not see that Adam took the apple, Eve took the apple first and then. No, that's definitely true. That's in the text. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. you think that's not an apple. Ever says apple. There's actually a a Jewish studies scholar at Rutgers who just wrote a book about how it became an apple <laughs> in, in, in medieval Europe, and it became. I, I heard I haven't read the book, but I heard in interviews with him. That it doesn't say in the Torah what kind of fruit it is, and and a lot of the people would presume it's you know fig because it, later in the story it says they made. They took fig leaves to cover themselves yeah. up because they thought they were naked, right? What does a fig leaf look like? You know, looks like a hand, oh, okay. right? You know, some fig leaves have five kind of things, right? And so, uh, uh, you know, but um, so maybe it was a fig, but at some point in somewhere in medieval Europe, art started making it into an apple, right? You know, in Christian art, and then it started to spread. And part of it was, he says, it was the change in trend. So the word palm in latin just means fruit but in french in the middle ages it became apple and that's how the art started to change too right and something like that so. but, but then you do still have it's eve who kind of corrupts adam which is kind of what's happening here right. in the christian in no, right in the text. yeah in the text so jezebel definitely is seen all throughout history as like you know we use the word jezebel as someone attempt yeah. <laughs> as they say right 
but hemp stress because that's always um, a woman, a woman, right? But you know, will be gender neutral now. Tempter, right? And so, yeah, tempter. Yes, uh, Christiana minds that temptation transformed is the is that the name of the book? I guess from the the, the professor of records. Um, and so, um, uh, yes, Jezebel is is seen as you know the, and I'm sure there were you know. In plays and movies and everything written about about Jezebel is but I'm sure like in the early silent movies there was probably a Jezebel movie that you know they were way more sexy than like the talkies were right and so mm -hmm. yeah okay so pre-code pre-code yes the pre-code movies yeah um you read it so but but let's see is they have so bad uh, uh, um, uh, uh, keep going Nancy. When Ahab heard these words, he rent his clothes and put sackcloth on his body. He laughed fasted and lay in sackcloth and walked about subdued. Right. So what is that a sign of? Um, repentance. Repentance. Yeah. repentance. Yeah. Okay. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not oh, bring the disaster in his lifetime. I will bring the disaster upon his house in his son's time. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Right? Yeah, he was the worst king. He was the worst king, but nobody's totally oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Maybe is that maybe that's what it's saying. There's all repentance is always there. Now he repented only after got caught. He got caught and he heard the <laughs> actual punishment and right. But it God still sees it as I guess somewhat sincere. Uh, what's this whole thing that, that he gets off but his it's, son's house is not like right? Well, in the Torah, we have uh, your, the, your descendants get punished. Well, your, Only three generations of your descendants can get punished right. for you if you are a hater of God, right? But let's think about it. So, like in the Ten Commandments, it talks about that, and also where Moses uh, confronts God uh, after the building cap, it talks about that, but it says, you know, three descendants, three generations. For those who hate God can get punished, but God loves the thousand generations of those who love me, right? And so, like, you see that, that's a huge discrepancy, right? So we still get caught up in the three generations that God punishes descendants. In the book of Ezekiel, he talks about that God doesn't punish descendants. He, he like, says, no, that's not right. But let's think about the uh, three generations would have lived in the same household as you, yeah. right? Yeah. And and so what does that mean? I mean, psychologically, it, it often is true that uh, you, pay for you things act the same way that your parents and grandparents you do, whether you your inherit parents. that trait or, you know, like, and we do pay for the sins of our, okay. our parents often. Yeah, and, you know, so like that's a naturalistic way of thinking about it. I, I guess it, for me, it was just, it was not the, 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 the generations to follow have trouble. It wasn't really my point. So much as he gets off. He gets off. No, he but, well, he's still, he's still going to so, die. He, he, he died. <laughs> well, well, Alder, Alder makes a, a yeah. point about that, that it's uh, not such a peaceful death. We'll find out. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see next time. But yeah. Couldn't you argue that yes, Hobb didn't actually commit the acts or instigate the acts? He just benefited from He the benefited acts. from them, but he kind of, he, he obviously knew what was happening when right. Elijah just stopped him on the road. Right? Amen. Uh, and but also like he knew that he brought idolatry to his because Elijah kept telling him for the last few years stop doing this and he you know um, uh, no to me it it gets back to something we talked about a little bit before that we have a very you know post enlightenment view of punishment and the individual yeah and you know to me the three generations is a step towards that because yeah. before yeah. it was like. Your whole society, your whole clan, forever, you yeah, know. Yeah. So we, I think it's it's actually a step towards kind yeah. of like this modernist or yeah. post enlightenment that, kind of. That's what a lot of yeah. like people who read kind of the history of of Western thought into the yeah. Bible, they see that as a step toward yeah. more of an idea of an individual, right? Right. Yeah. But it wasn't. It's really Jezebel that should be punished. Oh, we'll see. Okay. No, no. All right. But, well, well, over the but he said that too. He said that God says that. It yeah. says well, we'll punished to yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have a new reader. Well, um, 
I mean, we have a long chapter now. Now we we'll get to some of that. Oh, let's let's get through. This is the last chapter of the book. Now, the book, first book of Kings and second book of Kings, is just who knows, arbitrarily divided into two books. The the uh, our ancestors only had it as one book. Christians made it into two books. Now Jews have it as two books. But it was, if it was in a scroll, it would have been in one scroll. Um, why is it divided after chapter twenty-two into a new book? It's Mark. kind of it's kind of arbitrary. Maybe it was half and half and half. I don't know. I haven't counted it up. But then intermission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an intermission. Um, but I don't know. Not, I think it was before Gutenberg that, that it happened that way. But like a lot, a lot of the stuff that we think about happened because of printing. The way that a page of the Talmud looks yeah. is because of printers <laughs> made it like that way and became standardized, right? And um, stuff like that. So okay. Well, we're products of our time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So all... I, I was just, I, sorry. I, uh, two weeks ago, I was in the city for a day and I went to the, for first time I went to the Central <laughs> Library and they have a cool little museum there and they show the Gutenberg Bible they have oh, and wow. other yeah. other um, uh, manuscripts and, and old print and stuff. It was really cool, but they have, they have a cool, was it, they have a cool Megillah there too. The Megillah in Jewish law has to be written by hand, but Unlike the Torah, you can put art in it too, and so there's beautiful art and uh, you know drawings and things like that. That's a wonderful museum. Yeah, it's all categories. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Art and yeah, it's yeah. really cool. And it's very small, so you could, it's free, and you can do it in you know half an hour or something. Like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um. So chapter twenty-two. Someone else pick up. There was a low of three years with no war between Aram and Israel. In the third year, King Jehoshaphat of Judah came to visit the king of Israel. Right, so we're bringing back Jehoshaphat of Judah. Remember, now the kings of Judah in the south, they're better than the kings of Israel in the north. They last Still, longer. They last longer for the most part. Still of the house of David, right? And Jehoshaphat was one of the good ones. And his dad, his dad also, his dad, uh, his dad reigned, As Asa, right? reigned for 40 years. Jehoshaphat reigns for 25 years. Might be because his dad reigned so long that he didn't get to become king until later in life, right? Like, you know, King Charles and yeah. Queen Elizabeth, right? And so these are good kings, but what's he doing? King Jehoshaphat of Judah is making an alliance with, right? Remember, there's been civil wars between Israel and Judah, but now he's making an alliance with the king of Israel. Not only that, he's it, supplicating himself. Right. It seems right. He's going yeah. there, so not different commentators say, "Was this good or bad?" These are idolaters in yeah. the north, but then some say, "No." But it's also good to bring you know Train. all the people of Israel together in some way. So it goes back and forth. Okay. The king of Israel said to his courtiers, "You know that Ramoth Gilead belongs <laughs> to us, and yet we do nothing to recover it from the hands of the king of Aram." Aram, and he said to Jehoshaphat. Will you come with me to battle at Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat answered the king of Israel, I will do what you do. My troops shall be your troops. My horses shall be your horses. Mm -hmm. But Jehoshaphat said further to the king of Israel, please first inquire of the Lord. Right. So now Ahab, right, he's still kind of, he believes yeah. in God, but he knows that God has better relationships with, uh, <laughs> with the kings of Judah, right? Mm -hmm. So the king of Israel gathered the prophets, about 400 men, and asked them, Shall I march upon Ramoth Gilead for battle, or shall I not? March, they said, and the Lord will deliver it into your majesty's hands. Then Jehoshaphat asked, Isn't there another prophet of the Lord here through whom we can inquire? All right, so, so, bit, bit, yeah. bit, so Jehoshaphat, well, more of a nice person, person <laughs> said, We need another opinion, but why? We have to read between the lines, and I'll tell you what comes here is, you know, Say, but so they have 400 prophets of, of God. Why doesn't Jehoshaphat, you know, Jehoshaphat, why doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he trust them? Because when you have 400 do. people who all think alike, yeah. somebody's wrong. Exactly. <laughs> and, and they all, and, and they all say exactly the same thing. Right. And so, um, medieval Jewish commentators say, for prophets, except for Moses, prophets do not give the exact word of God. Actually, I was at Central Synagogue last night, and and uh, and Angela Buckdahl was preaching last night, and she kind of gave uh, 
talk about this a little bit. Uh, there, there's the idea that all the prophet that Moses has one uh, one lens between him and God, but the rest of the prophets have several lenses, and so therefore they use their own language, they use their own images, they they have a message from God, but they have to bring in their own imagination into it. And so when you have 400 people saying the same thing, what is it saying? Well, and you have 400 Jews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 400 Jews saying, good. They're not prophets of Baal. They're prophets of God, supposedly. But what are they? They are false prophets, right? Yeah, or or they're being paid by the king. Or they're, right? <laughs> and so Yehoshaphat realizes that. When you have 400 people saying the exact same thing, there's no, uh, they're not, they're, uh, no angels. Yeah, there's not, yeah, right. They're, it's not, it can't be trusted. And the king, <laughs> keep going, keep going. And the yeah. king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, "There is one more man through whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he never prophesizes anything good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Misfortune. <laughs> Micaiah, son of Imla, but Je King Jehoshaphat said." Don't say that, your majesty. So the king of Israel summed an officer and said, bring Micaiah, son of Imla, at once. Right, so why why doesn't uh, Ahab listen to this guy? Because he doesn't agree he doesn't with like him. The answer. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't like the answer. He's the real prophet, right? We already know that Ahab is always wrong, therefore this prophet is, is the right one. And, and the king of Judah realizes yeah. that, right? Same reason Trump fired Millie. Yeah. Whatever. So, like, yeah. So, it's like, um, <laughs> yes, to be a prophet is to tell the king the truth, even if the king doesn't like it, right? These other 400 people are just telling the king what he wants to hear. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah were seated on their thrones, arrayed in their robes and on the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah, son of Shaniah, had provided himself with iron horns, and he said, Thus said the Lord, With these you shall gore the Amoraeans till you make an end of them. And all the other prophets were prophesying similarly. March upon Ramoth Gilead and triumph. The Lord will deliver it into your majesty's hands. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, the words of the prophets are with one accord, favorable to the king. Let your word be like that. The rest of the of them speak of them speak a favorable word. So now we already know that the king's <clears throat> the king's advisors are already telling tell the prophets what to say, mm -hmm. right? And that's why another way we know that these four hundred guys are yes are unduly influenced, right? As the Lord lives, Micaiah answered, I will speak only what the Lord tells me. When he came before the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we march upon the Ramah Gilead for battle, or shall we not? He answered him, march and triumph. The Lord will deliver it into your majesty's hands. The king said to him, how many times must I adjure you to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered over the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let everyone return to his home in safety. Didn't I tell you, said the king of Israel to Jehoshaphat, that he would not prophesy good fortune for me, but only misfortune? But Micaiah said, I will call upon you to hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord seated upon his throne with all the hosts of heaven standing in attendance to the right and to the left of him. The Lord asked, who will entice Ahab so that he will march and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Then one said thus, and another said thus, <laughs> until a certain spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. How? The Lord asked him. And he replied, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then he said, you will entice and you will prevail. Go out and do it. So the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. For the Lord has decreed disaster upon you. Okay. So what's he saying? He's like, all these guys are liars. I'm telling the truth. You should still go to battle. The people will be triumphant, but you're going to die. You're going to die. 
But I'm, I'm yeah. confused by the beginning part, yeah. or maybe I'm misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. um, when we go before, um, which, which verse? Uh, verse to back up to like 14, 15. Mm -hmm. I will speak only what the Lord tells me. When he came before the king, the king said to him, you know, shall we march? He answered him, march and trial. Right. But, but then it goes on and seems like the people will try and attack you. you. You will personally right. get. You'll personally die. See, like she was at a shepherd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In verse 21, what's the Hebrew for a certain spirit? A certain spirit? That's her question. A ruach? Ruach, yeah, something ruach. A ruach, like, it, like Wind. in his <laughs> dream where he saw this, this scene of God and and these beings speaking to God, one of them, which is called a ruach, you know, spoke out, right? Okay. Yeah. Music, breath, right? You know, well, ruach means wind. Wind, breath. And, and breath. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, like at camp, it means like spirit, you know, like a cheerleader had spirit, right? Yeah. So, um, um, this sorry. also gives God agency yeah. that God is the one who, to punish Ahab, yeah. created the fault, you know, gave permission to his. Right hand person to yeah. speak into the four hundred people. Yeah, the false prophet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the uh, to convince him to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, okay. another, there's another, another interesting note in all yeah. there from a chapter or two ago. If you guys, if everybody noticed, the phrase "king of Israel" has been used, not Ahab. Uh -huh. And what Alder mm -hmm. says that some of the thought is that maybe this was originally written about Ahab's son. Uh -huh. Um, and because that's also why Elijah is not there. Uh, but there is the one verse we just read that does say Ahab. Yeah, it's the only yeah. one that says it, Ahab. It could be different stories. So, yeah. Different stories that kind of came together over maybe, here. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, I think we're meant to see it as Ahab. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I'm always interested, you know, in the reception in, history. In, in, in both the yeah. uh, what we're meant to, to learn from it and how it came to be. Yeah. All right, so we're at. Uh, so, yeah. so I have a question though. Is this so? Is God kind of giving him another chance? By Maybe Micaiah to him and, and actually telling him because yeah. if God gives permission for this voice for all the prophets to tell him, yeah, yeah, you know, a lie, yeah, to get him in trouble. And yeah. Now he's having this chance to hear that. Yeah. Yes, the, God always gives the people with the prophets. God always gives people <laughs> chances to turn around. Right. Think about the book of Jonah. That we read in the afternoon of Yom Kippur, which you should all come in the afternoon to hear the book of Jonah, right? And so Jonah, Jonah, first way he runs away, he doesn't want to be a prophet because God's sending him to speak to the, the non-Israelites, the people in, in, in Nineveh, and say, God's gonna bring destruction on you. But what do they do? They believe it. They believe it, and, and God doesn't bring the destruction. That's that's prophecy, right? Giving you the chance, the prophets give you. Two pictures of the future. One is explicit and one's implicit. The one of what will not happen is the implicit. Yeah, is the one, implicit right. one. The explicit one is this is what the future is going to be if you continue after all. Right? Yeah. Non-Jews to believe the prophet. Right. Well, that's part of the book of Jonah, which is also supposed to be kind of funny, like Esther is like the only people who listen to the prophets are are the non-Jews. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thereupon, Zedekiah, son of Shanana, Shanana stepped up. Yeah, this is one of the false prophets, right? Stepped up and struck Micaiah on the cheek and demanded, Which way did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak with you? <laughs> and Micaiah replied, We will find out on the day when you tried to hide in the innermost room. What's the innermost room? The, the place that only the Priests can go. Maybe and I think it may. I think you, I, I think you might be using a euphemism for the bathroom. <laughs> right. Remember, Gideon is it Gidon who kills the king in the yeah. in, right? I think. It, <laughs> then the king of Israel said, "Take Micaiah and turn him over to Ammon, Ammon, the city's governor, and to Prince Joash, and say the king's orders are: put this fellow in prison yeah. and let his." There be scant bread and scant water until I come home safe. Uh oh. To which Micaiah retorted, If you ever come home safe, the Lord has not spoken through me. Uh -huh. He said further, Listen, all you peoples. So the king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah 
marched upon Ramoth-Gilead, the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Disguise yourself and go into the battle, but you wear your robes. So the king of Israel went into the battle disguised. Now the king of Aram. So why why did, why is why does the king of Israel want to be disguised? Because he, he knows he's got he a death sentence. He knows he's got a death sentence. If he yeah. goes in as yeah. the king, yeah, yes. totally. Yes, game over. He, he's trying to hide from what God's decree, right? right. Yes. Out outsmart the prophecy. Yeah. 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 Now the king of Aram had instructed his 32 chariot officers, don't attack anyone, small or great, except the king of Israel. So when the chariot officers saw Jehoshaphat, whom they took for the king of Israel, they turned upon him to attack him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. Right, Jehoshaphat's the king of Judah, yeah. not the king of Israel. Right? Yeah. <laughs> guy. And when the guy. chariot officers became aware that he was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. Then a man drew his bow at random, and he hit the king of Israel between the plates of the armor, and he said to his charioteer, turn the horses around and get me behind the lines. I'm wounded. The battle raged all day long, and the king remained propped up in the chariot facing Aram. The blood from the wound ran down into the hollow of the chariot, and at dusk he died. As the sun was going down, a shout went through the army, Every man to his own town, every man to his own district. So the king died and was brought to Samaria. They buried the king in Samaria, and they flushed out the chariot at the pool of Samaria. Thus the dogs lapped up his blood, and the horse bathed in it in accordance with the word that the Lord has spoken. Uh, it's not really, well, the horse bathed, means like this was a pool that prostitutes uh, bathed in, right, that they used to clean up. That's what, yeah. that's what it means, right? But so there we go. A prophecy, uh, the prophecy happened. It doesn't say they won yet. No, yeah, no, it, it never, it, it doesn't. We now move on. Oh, okay, you okay. Know, yeah. so you know, the but, but Yehoshaphat survives, yeah. and presumably that means that they were somewhat successful, right? Yeah, yeah. But he died as not the king, he died as he bled to death as a he bled to death all day. Yeah. He kept fighting, right. bled to death all day, kind of a heroic death, right. But he wasn't the king, he was just some random soldier. Right? And he never knew whether there was victory or not. He, he doesn't know what happened, yeah, right? Um, yeah. But you, you said a couple of times that kings in the Bible, death is never heroic, really. Right, it's yeah, like, not, like in the Greeks, where it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, in the end, not heroic. Yeah, he, they cleaned up, the dogs right. cleaned up his blood, and it wasn't heroic also because he wasn't the king, wasn't but he died, he was just a random soldier, yeah. right? You know, they... I mean, he was the king, but he was just random, you know, and, and even though he tried to be heroic and, and keep fighting, right? Well, yeah. nobody came to save him because they thought it was just a random soldier. Maybe, too. think it was maybe. the king. Maybe, maybe the people, maybe the soldier, the other soldiers didn't know that this was the king. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Right. All right. So other... Is it ironic that he may have actually survived? If he... <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But but this is kind of like a Greek hero story though with fate. You can't get away from fate, too, right. right? You know, the only thing that gets you away from fate for the prophets is repentance, repentance. right? You can't hide from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's finish up that. Yeah, verse thirty nine. So pick up. The other events of Ahab's reign and all his actions, the ivory palace that he built and all the towns that he fortified are all recorded in the annals of the kings of Israel. They have slept with his fathers, and the son, Isaiah, oh, Haziah. Uh, Haziah, succeeded him as king. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, had become king of Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 25 years. His mother's name was Azuba. Daughter of Shilhi. 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 He followed closely the course of his father, Asa, and did not deviate from it, doing what was pleasing to the Lord. However, the shrines did not cease to function. The people still sacrificed and offered at the shrines. And further, Jehoshaphat submitted to the king of Israel. As for the other events of Jehoshaphat's reign in valor, he displayed in battle 
They are recorded in the annals of the king of Judah. Right, so these shrines, though, it doesn't say that they're idolatrous shrines. They could be shrines to, to the God of Israel, but it's supposed to all be centralized in Jerusalem, right? So that was that was a sin, but it was not as great of a sin as, oh. as Ahab, right? And and but it said he was a you know a righteous person, right? But but one of the bad things is he submitted himself to Ahab, right? Yeah. He also stamped out the remaining male prostitutes who had survived in the land from the time of his father Asa. Right, male prostitutes. That doesn't mean just people on the street. This means the the people in the um, in the in the temples in the shrines, right? The the sacred prostitutes, as they're called, right? The people the the sexual uh, religious rites. Right? Like, right? There was no king in Edom. The Viceroy acted as king. Jehoshaphat constructed a harish ships to sail to Ophir for gold, but did not sail because the ships were wrecked at Ezon Geber. Right. Ezon Geber is uh, people say it might be what Elot is today. So he created, he like Solomon, he tried to build up a navy again, right? To go on the Red Sea port, right? So why is it saying that uh, that there was no king in Edom. Edom controlled the Negev. So the Israelites had a port below, or the Judites, sorry, had a port below their territory because there was not, you know, strong political power in Edom, right? But he tried to build this navy, but what happened? They, one, yeah. they weren't successful, right? Then Isaiah, son of Ahab, proposed to Jeros Jehoshaphat, let my servants sail on the ships with your servants. Je Jehoshaphat, would not agree. They didn't want to have a joint navy with the Israelites. Yeah. <laughs> Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of his father David and his son Yehoram mm -hmm. succeeding him as king. Meanwhile, Ahaziah, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, had become king of Israel in Samaria in the 17th year of King Jehoshaphat of Judah. He reigned over Israel two years. He did what was displeasing to the Lord, following in the footsteps of his father and his mother, and those of Yeroh, Yeroboam, Yeroboam, right, right the first son, king of Israel, Yeroboam, son of Nebat, who had caused Israel to sin. He worshipped Baal and bowed down to him. He vexed the Lord, it's not a good thing, and <laughs> God of Israel, just as his father had done. And that ends Kings the first book of Kings. Yeah. Right. I want to read three verses. I'm going to read them here because today is called uh, uh, Shabbat Zachor. Shabbat before Purim is called Shabbat Zachor, where we're supposed to um, remember. remember Amalek. Shabbat Zachor means, Zachor means remember. We're supposed to remember Amalek. Uh, and you read the, to the regular Torah reading, you're supposed to add these three verses. So I will then put them up here, but for some reason, the, not uh, loading. But, um, but you can turn to Deuteronomy chapter 25, and we'll read the three verses at the bottom more if we look on the screen here. It's 17, 18, and 19. Um, uh, no, wait, it's not that Deuteronomy what? 25. Yeah. 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 Right and Amalek is you know why why are we why do we read this before Purim is because uh, in the book of Esther um, it says that Haman is a the descendant of Agag Agag remember who Agag was it was the king that King Saul did not kill right even though he was supposed to remember because he was a descendant of Amalek Amalek were the people who attacked the Israelites while they were leaving Egypt, but attacked the rear, the rear yeah. right? Okay. Not that we hold a grudge. Right, but this is very much in the news because Netanyahu yeah. said, remember Amalek, remember what Amalek did when he was talking about Hamas, but that was brought up in The Hague, saying this is a genocidal uh, um, uh, statement because... You're supposed to wipe out Amalek. Right. But what these Netanyahu was referring to these verses. 
And how do we wipe out Amalek? With groggers, right? Oh. <laughs> right. That's what we do at Purim. But uh, but they were the the lawyers in the Hague were bringing up the verses from Samuel about killing King Agag and all the people, not these verses that that Netanyahu was talking about, which might be more ambiguous or uh, ambiguous, right? And so uh, you know, like, is it genocidal language or is it just is it biblical language that helps you th that makes you think about evil, right? That that's it. Right. Okay, so let's let's read these verses. I'll read them. So the Chor et Asher Asalcha Amalek the Derech B'Tzitzchem Mimitzrayim. Remember what Amalek did to you on your journey after you left Egypt. How, undeterred by fear of God, he surprised you on the march when you were famished and weary, and cut down all the stragglers in the, in your rear. Therefore. When Adonai, your God, grants you safety from all your enemies around you, in the land that Adonai is giving you as a hereditary portion, you shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Do not forget. Those are, those are the verses from Deuteronomy, not the ones from, from Exodus, and not the ones from the book of Samuel. Of course, right? so that, that's what you read before before reading. So there was an interesting um, podcast yesterday, if anybody ever listens to The Daily, which is the New York Times, yeah. where they analyzed Schumer's speech, uh, where he called for elections yeah. to, he said that Netanyahu had lost his way, um, but it was a very interesting breakdown of Schumer's speech. Which was more ambiguous than... than people on the right or the left when you hear from it too. It's more nuanced. More nuanced, nuanced. Nuance is a better word, right? All right, so uh, we'll end there. Next week, we'll pick up, a, a, we'll, we'll, we'll sing it in a second, but we'll pick up at, uh, the second book of Kings or Melachim Bet, as we say in Hebrew. And um, all right, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see the downfall of Isabel uh, next week. Something more evil.